Hello and welcome to our letter of the day videos. Today we actually aren't going to do a letter, but we are going to do some phonics and math and shape and color and art and science and story time just like usual. Our theme today is butterflies. So today instead of doing a letter, we're going to do syllable learning. So syllables are just when you take a word and you divide it into parts. Why would it be a good idea to divide a word into parts? Well, because when you divide a word that's really long into smaller parts and you just read each of those parts and then put it all together, it just makes reading a whole lot easier. Okay, let's start with an easy one. Let's start with the word butterfly. You can just hear that word is divided into parts. Butterfly. Let's clap out those parts. Butterfly. How many times did I clap? Three times. Now you try it. Butterfly. So I divided the word butterfly into three parts. That means that butterfly has three syllables. Okay, let's play a little game. I'm going to show you a picture. We're going to say the name of the picture, what's on the picture, and then we're going to clap or tap our head or shoulders or tummy. I'll tell you what to do each time. Let's start with butterfly. Let's do that one again. So here is a picture of a butterfly. So let's clap out the syllables for butterfly. Butterfly. How many syllables did butterfly have? How many times did you clap? Three, good job, three times. Okay, for the next one, let's pat our head or tap, tap our head. So what's this? Umbrella. So let's tap our head and say this parts of umbrella. Umbrella. How many times did you tap your head? Let's do it again. Umbrella. Three. Umbrella has three syllables. Let's see the next one. Ooh, let's do this one with, uh, let's try to, to blink our eyes. How about that for this one? Are you ready? This is a kite, so let's do this together. Kite, let's do it again. Kite, how many times did we blink? One time, kite. So kite has one syllable. For the next one, let's see if we can tap our shoulders. What is this? It's a dragonfly. Let's tap our shoulders. Dragonfly. How many times did you tap your shoulders? Three times. Dragonfly. Three syllables. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. This time, let's stomp our feet. Ladybug. Let's stomp. Ladybug. How many times did you stomp? You want to do it again? Ladybug. Three. We stomped three times. Ladybug. Okay, so let's take a look at the next one. For this one, we're going to jump. This is a snail. So let's jump. Snail. Can you do it again? Snail. How many times did we jump? One time. Snail has one syllable. Okay, for the next one, let's see if we can pat our tummy. This is a shovel. You ready? Shovel. How many syllables? Two. Good job. For the next one, let's see if we can touch our head again. Watering. Watering. Let's do it again. Watering. Three syllables, good job. This is the last one, we're gonna clap it. This one is a wheelbarrow. So let's try that, wheelbarrow. One more time, wheelbarrow. How many claps? Three, so wheelbarrow has three syllables. Well, you did a great job with syllable practice today. And now for math, we're going to be counting some butterflies. We're going to be using a tens frame. This is what a tens frame is. And so this has some little boxes on it. A tens frame has boxes and let's count and see how many boxes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, 10. So each of these has 10 boxes. So we're going to see how many more butterflies we need to draw to make 10. I already have how many? One, two. So I have two butterflies. Now let's draw more butterflies to make 10. Will you help me count as I draw? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So two plus eight equals 10. Let's do the next one, okay? This time, how many butterflies can you see? Let's count them. One, two, three, four. And let's draw some more butterflies to make 10. We're gonna fill up all the spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six. So four plus six equals 10. Let's count how many butterflies are already here for the next one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now let's make some more butterflies to fill up all the spots and make 10. One, two, three, four. So six plus four equals 10. Okay, let's count the next one. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see how many more will we make 10. One, two, three, four, five. Good job. So five more. Five plus five equals 10. For the next one, I know it shows two, but I'm going to go ahead and draw one more. And we're going to make this three instead, since we've already done two up above. Okay, so let's count how many butterflies are here already. One, two, three. Now let's make some more butterflies and try to get 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So three plus seven, equals 10. Wow, you did a great job adding butterflies. Now I wanna show you how you can draw a butterfly. For our shape practice today, we're going to be making a shape butterfly. So to start with, I'm going to draw this shape. I want you to tell me what it is. What shape is this? That's an oval. If you'd like to draw one too, you can get some paper and make an oval. The oval is gonna be up and down, up and down. We call that vertical. Can you say vertical? Vertical is up and down, good job. Now we're going to make four more ovals, but these ovals are gonna be side to side like this. We call this horizontal. Side to side is horizontal. So let's make two on that side and two more over here on this side. So we have four horizontal ovals. Inside of each of these horizontal ovals, we're going to draw triangles. Triangles have three sides. So let's draw triangles in each of these. This is a butterfly, so these are each of the wings. Okay, next I'm going to draw two lines at the top. And I'm gonna make a shape and I want you to tell me what the shape is. What shape is that? That's a circle, good job. These are gonna be the butterfly's antenna, two circles. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is make a rectangle. And to do that, I'm just going to make a line that goes straight across. And another one, see, that's a rectangle. Let's do it again and again. So now we have some rectangles. If you look right here at the bottom, this is a semicircle or half of a circle. I'm gonna color it in just to make it a little easier for you to see. That's a semicircle or half circle. 
Okay, next I'm going to make some little eyes on my butterfly. And then I'm going to do one final shape. Let me see if you know what this shape is. It looks like a moon. Do you know what shape that is? That's a crescent, crescent. Well, let's go back and see if we can remember all these shapes that we used to make this butterfly, okay? All right, so what shape was the butterfly's body? That's an oval and it's up and down, up and down. So we call that vertical. Now, what shape did we use to make the wings? Oval, but they're side to side. So that's horizontal. What shape is inside each of the wings? A triangle, good. What shape is here? What shape makes the antenna? Circle. And then right here, what shape is this on his body? A rectangle. Down at the bottom, this is a semicircle. And then finally, his mouth is a crescent. Wow, we packed a lot of shapes into this butterfly today. Well, now we're going to make a butterfly, but we're not going to draw it. We're going to make it with a coffee filter. So let me show you what that looks like. And if you don't have a coffee filter, this is what you use in a coffee pot to make coffee. Look at what shape this is when I open it up. What shape is that? It's a circle. So you could just cut out a circle on, from white paper and that would be just fine too. Well, I'm going to show you how to make a coffee filter butterfly. We're going to combine our color practice for today with our art project. I'm going to spread this coffee filter out really wide and then I'm going to use these watercolor paints and I'd like for you to tell me what colors I'm using, okay? That'll be our color practice for today. So what color is this? That is pink. Good job. So let's just put some pink on this butterfly. Maybe some more on this side. Okay, so next I'm going to use this color. What color is this? That's blue. Good job. It's kind of a bright blue, isn't it? Let's put some over here. Okay, next I'm going to use this color. What color is this? That's green. Good job, green. Let's put some green over here. We want our butterfly to be very pretty and colorful. Next, I'm going to use this color way up here at the top. What color is this? That's orange. Good job, orange. Okay, this is looking great. Next, let's use this color right here. Can you tell me what it is? Purple, that's purple. I like that purple color. Okay, next we're going to use this color right here. Can you tell me what it is? That's red, good, red. Let's put some red right here. Okay, we only have just a little bit more of white on this. So let's see if we can use this color to finish our butterfly off. What color is this? Yellow, that's yellow, good job. So let's put some yellow over here. And I think we're finished. I think all the white parts on our butterfly have been filled in. So we're gonna let this dry and then we're going to turn it into a butterfly. While it's drying, let's do some science. For science today, we're going to be talking about the life cycle of a butterfly. When God designed the butterfly, wow, was he getting creative. A butterfly starts as an egg. Inside the egg is a caterpillar, kind of looks like a worm. The caterpillar is hungry. In fact, it eats its way out of the egg. And then when it wiggles out, it eats the egg. It's still hungry, so it begins to eat the leaf that it's sitting on. It munches and munches and eats and eats. And then finally, when it gets really full and enough time has passed, it spins itself into a new home, a cocoon, also known as a chrysalis. Well, inside the chrysalis, something happens. The caterpillar changes. The caterpillar turns into 
a butterfly. It munches a little corner out of that cocoon when it's ready, and then it spreads its wings and stretches out of that cocoon. Its wings are wet at first, just like the butterfly that we made, but pretty soon it gets dry and it can fly away. So let's finish up this project. So here is the coffee filter. It's nice and dry now. So I'm just going to pinch it in the middle, just like this. And then I'm going to use a clothespin to keep it all together, just like that. And then I'm going to use just a piece of a pipe cleaner and that can be his antenna. So there you have it. We made a little coffee filter butterfly today. I have a story I'd like to read to you for story time. It's called The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Let's read it together. It's by Eric Carl. The Very Hungry Caterpillar. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. Can you spot the little egg on the leaf? There it is. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. Oh, that night he had a tummy ache. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf, and after that, he felt much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore, and he wasn't quite a little caterpillar anymore either. He was a big, fat caterpillar now. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and... <gasps> He was a beautiful butterfly. I think butterflies are one of God's most amazing and creative creations. Well, I hope you had fun today learning about butterflies. I will see you next time for the letter of the day. Goodbye.